Hello everyone, I'm Ning Ning. Today I'm going to talk about generalized evidence parsing for effect handlers, or efficient compilation of effect handlers to C. In this work, we give a formalized evaluation semantics for algebraic effects into a polymorphic lambda calculus, and show how this technique can be used to generate efficient C code with no special runtime support. We achieve our goal using a sequence of refinements to the semantics of algebraic effects through multi-prompt delimited control, evidence passing semantics, bubbling yields, and a monadic translation. And we prove each step is semantics preserving. Along the way, we also explore various interesting points in the design space. We have implemented our techniques in the COCA programming language, which compiles to standard C code without needing any special runtime support, not even a garbage collector, thanks to precious reference counting techniques. We show our technique is effective by benchmarking COCA against other implementations of effect handlers. The main two challenges in this work is how to search through the evaluation context efficiently and how to capture the assumptions efficiently. Let's look at a concrete example. Here is an example for the reader effect. There are three parts. In the first part, we define an effect read, which has a single operation ask that given a unit returns an int. The second part defines a handler for the read. The implementation says that if the program calls an ask, it will resume the resumption k with the result value one. Handler takes a computation, which is represented as a unit taking function. In this computation, we simply call ask twice. Since each ask returns one, we will get two as our final result. Reader is one of the simplest examples for algebraic effects. But in practice, we can also have more complex examples where we can never resume as in exceptions or resume multiple times as in non-deterministic programs. This page gives the essence of the untapped semantics of algebraic effects. But please don't get scared. While being formal, the operational semantics is quite intuitive, and we will go through the rules one by one. The first rule is just the standard call by value beta reduction. The handler rule is where we define a handler. As we have seen, the computation to be handled is always a unit taking function, which essentially corresponds to a suspended computation. We execute the computation and it turns a handler into a handle. When handling a computation, there are two possible situations. In the first case, the computation evaluates to a value, so we remove the handle and propagate the value. In the second case, the computation performs an operation which is handled by a handler. Several things to note here. First, this capital E represents an evaluation context, which essentially represents a call stack. That means, we can perform an operation deep inside the code stack. Then, how do we know which handler is used to handle this operation? We will need to search through the evaluation context and find the innermost handler that can handle this operation. And we get the operation implementation F. Now we are ready to apply F to the operation argument V as well as a resumption, which captures the whole evaluation context between handle and the operation code. It seems everything just works well until you want to compile algebraic effects efficiently. The main problematic rule is performed, which includes two potentially expensive runtime operations. First, since the perform can be deeply inside the evaluation context and will require H to be the innermost handler, that means we need to perform a linear search through the current evaluation context. Second, after finding the handler clause F, we need to provide the resumption. And that means we need to capture the evaluation context up to the find handler and create a resumption function. This is not only expensive, but, but might be impossible for some platforms like .NET or WASM, where you have no access to stacks. In this work, we address these compilation challenges by representing various refinements to algebraic effects. Next, we will explain each of these steps and we will use this progress bar to keep track of where we are. We start by looking at the reader example again. 
but this time through the operational semantics. First, we put the definition of the handler on the top right and fit the program into one line. When we evaluate the expression, according to handler, we are going to execute the computation. And by app, we just substitute the unit away and get a handle expression. Now we evaluate the first perform. We need to find the innermost handler, in this case, h1. So we evaluate the expression into f applied to the argument unit and the resumption. f says it's going to apply its second argument to 1, which further gives us this. As the second perform ask will be handled in a similar manner, the final result would be 1 plus 1, which is 2. To pave the way, we first apply multi-prompt semantics. We omit some less interesting details. With multi-prompt semantics, each handle is replaced by a prompt. Importantly, each prompt is associated with a fresh unique marker, in this case, M1. Now, when we do perform ask, we can search through the context and evaluate perform to yield M1 as we know exactly which handler to yield to. We can also apply the operation implementation to the argument and it now only waits for the resumption k. Now, prompt will handle yield, where we will capture the resumption and evaluate it to the same expression as before, except we have replaced the handle with prompt. At first sight, going through multi-prompt semantics does not seem to buy us much, because the overall process is still the same. However, now we separated searching from capturing, and it opens up the way for optimizing each part individually, which we will do with evidence passing and bubbling. First, we avoid searching using evidence passing semantics, where instead of searching for a handler in the evaluation context, we will push down the current handlers as an evidence vector. To illustrate the idea, we need a little bit more space between expressions. Evaluation always starts with an empty evidence vector, but after handler evaluates to prompt, it inserts itself into the evidence vector for the rest of the computation. Now we have an evidence for read. At this point, the first perform ask can directly get the current evidence vector, look up the evidence for read, which gives us M1 and H1, and we can directly generate yield M1. This is the essence of evidence passing. Importantly, such a lookup can even be implemented efficiently in constant time. In particular, if the system is equipped with effect types, as in the case of COCA, then the effect type will correspond exactly to the runtime shape of the evidence vector. And if we know the effect type at compile time, we can statically determine the index of a handler. We can even do more. It turns out with evidence passing, we can often avoid yields by evaluating tail resumptive operations in place. Tail resumptive operations are of this form, where the resumption is directly resumed with an expression E. For example, F in H1 is of this form. Well, this is not accidental. Almost all common operations used in practice are tail resumptive. For those operations, once we yield up, we will immediately resume with the result of evaluating E. But that's not necessary. We can directly evaluate E in place. In this case, since we can get H1 from the evidence vector, we can replace this yield M1 with the tail resumptive body, in this case, 1. We will do the same for the second perform, so we will be able to evaluate the whole expression without even doing any yields. One subtlety of this op optimization, though, is that we will need an underframe to adjust the evidence vector to preserve semantic correctness, but we are going to skip the details. However, not all operations are tail resumptive. For example, if f is of this form, then we will get back to yield, and yield is still a non-local and expensive operation. We use bubbling to make yields local by bubbling a yield up until it meets its corresponding prompt frame. To see the idea of bubbling more clearly, let's first make the call stack more obvious. For example, in the third expression, we will first do yield, 
whose result will be added to perform ask, and the whole computation is guarded by a prompt. We can also do the same to the resumption. Now it is more obvious that during capturing, we are capturing multiple frames at the same time. With bubbling, we are going to bubble up the continuation in little parts. When we are yielding, we keep the currently partially built up resumption as an extra argument to yield, starting from the identity function. We extend it with every frame one at a time until we meet the prompt where the resumption is now complete. Now with evidence passing semantics, we have made perform local and with bubbling, we have made yields local. Since everything is local, it opens up a way to implement everything in a monad. With monadic translation, our running example will be translated into a monadic expression as this. The monad we are using is also regular. It is essentially a reader monad for the current evidence vector composed with a control monad. The definition of control monad can be better understood via the monadic binding of MON. If we bind E with G, we will first evaluate E. If E results in a pure result, then we can pass the result and the current evidence vector to G. Otherwise, if E performs an operation and thus generates a yield, we will bow this yield and add G to the partially built up resumption. You can see all ingredients of transitions in this definition. We have evidence passing, multi-prompt, delimited control, and bubbling. At this point, we can use regular compilation techniques to compile the algebraic effects to any target platform. As an example, we show how COCA compiles to standard C. This is the C code generated for this expression, and we highlight some key components. This context is the evidence passing part, which stores the current evidence vector. When perform ask, as in this case, the type is statically known, we can do a constant time array access to find the handler. We also optimize the representation of the control monad, since in practice, most operations are still resumptive, we assume most code will not yield. So we always return results normally assuming pure and set a flag to indicate yielding. If yielding, we will perform a yield extent which implements bubbling. As you can see, all ingredients fit nicely into the final generated C. Most importantly, if the code does not yield, as in most cases, the computation will take the happy path, where there is no yield and no allocation. All the techniques we have described are implemented in the COCA compiler, and we benchmark COCA with other implementations of effect handlers. The results are meant to establish that our work is viable and can be competitive, but should not be interpreted as a measure of absolute performance between systems and languages. Our paper included more detailed discussion of the benchmarks. Here, we would like to highlight that the counter benchmark emphasizes the impact of nested handlers. As we can see, when the number of nested handlers increase, as the operation is still resumptive, the time of COCA stays nearly the same, while, for example, for Motico or Camo, the time increases linearly. Hope you enjoyed this presentation. If you are excited to know more, please play with COCA. On Thursday, we are going to give a tutorial on COCA. Please come and join us if that sounds interesting to you. Finally, we have also implemented our technique as a Haskell library available on Hackage. That's all I want to say. Thank you for your attention, and we are happy to take any questions.